What's up, YouTube? It's your man's LA Realization coming back at you with another video. No, I haven't changed that intro, and no, I know what I want to change it to. So, in today's video, we're talking about my videographer kit and what I think you should use to get started. First up, at the heart of any videographer's kit is the camera, and my top recommendation is the Nikon Z8. This camera packs a punch with its incredible 8K video capabilities, making it a fantastic choice for both beginners and seasoned videographers alike. So now the choice you're going to have to make when you go to NikonUSA.com, because I live in the USA, or Adorama, or b and or wherever you buy your camera gear for, from, is which version are you going to buy? Are you going to buy the body only, or are you going to buy it as a kit? If you buy it body only, it's going to, the camera's going to run you $4,000. If you buy it as a kit, you'll get the 24 to 120 lens, and that's going to run you $4,900. So you'd have to make that choice, you know, which one you want to do. So now that we're talking about glass, Let's get into what I would recommend you get. Now let's talk glass. Pair your Nikon Z8 with the Nikkor 24 to 120 f4 lens. It's versatile, offering a wide zoom range from 24 to 120, a constant f4 aperture, and it gives excellent pictures. And I mean excellent pictures. So if you buy this lens separately, it's going to run you about $1,100. If you buy it with the kit, like I said before, it's going to run you $4,900. That's just a choice you have to make. Um, and later on in the video, we're going to talk about this lens here as I think it'll run out your kit um, for that little white. To protect your investment and give you more control, consider the small rig full cage 3940, which runs you about $59. This rugged cage provides mounting points for accessories like monitors, microphones, and handles, giving you a much needed creative freedom. Um, as I said, I prefer a half cage only because I shoot by myself and it's just easier to take the camera in and out. Um, when I'm on set, I'm shooting by myself, you know. So like right now, my camera is set up with a microphone, a top handle, a monitor, and it's in the cage. Now, if someone wants to take photos right now, I would have to take all that, all that equipment off in order to use it as a photo camera, and that's not a very good thing to do. So, and your boy's not paying another four thousand dollars for another Nikon Z8. So what's going to probably end up happening is, depending on what I'm doing, I'm gonna have to use a trusty Z6 II. That's my photo camera. Good audio is, is crucial for video production and the DDV Mic D3 is a fantastic shotgun microphone. It's perfect for capturing clear, crisp audio and reducing unwanted noise. It's incredibly reliable for on the go shooting and it'll run you about $100. Um, the only thing I don't like about the v Mic D3 is that it's battery powered, which I guess could be a good thing too because you can always buy AAA batteries. You can find them everywhere. But I prefer, um, it getting power from the camera. That's just my preference. So that way I have to ever worry about if I'm give, giving it you know, power or not. But it is what it is. For added stability and flexibility when shooting, the small rig top panel 2165C, which will run you about $59, is a great addition. It allows for easy handling and ensures you get those unique angles without compromising on stability. A top panel is a, very, it's a must to have. In fact, I have another one over here that goes on the cold chew. At first I was really scared about it, but I like it. A sturdy tripod is essential for steady shots. And the Peak Design tripod is an excellent choice for its compact, easy to set up. It offers exceptional stability, even in challenging conditions. So I also have other two other tripods I'm talk about. That's, I'm not sure I recommend them, but just you'll see where I'm going at in a second. So the first tripod I actually bought was the, this bid row SC2C. Um, I really like this tripod, but as you can see, the form factor leaves much to be desired. And trying to put this in my backpack if I'm going out for a hike or whatever, it is very cumbersome. So instead of me using this all the time, I just use it when I'm in my house or at studio because it's easy to sit up that way. But if I'm going on a hike, I'm not bringing this with me. And then I also have this Manfrotto. And you can see that it's much bigger than the small rig and the peak design, but it's the same issue. Even though this one, this form factor is a lot smaller than the bit row, it still leaves much to be desired. And oh, by the way, the peak, this peak design tripod uh, is $380. The carbon fiber version is $650. Now, do I think that it's worth 1.5 more times the cost of this carbon fiber? No. I do not. 
Do I feel the weight of this when I'm hiking? Yes. Yes, I do. So my recommendation is to, if you can afford to, of course, get the carbon fiber version, but right now I'm still happy with the aluminum version. Now let's talk about storage. You'll need a reliable, fast memory card for your high reliable foot footage. The ProGrade 256 gigabyte CX Express card boasts lightning fast read write speeds, ensuring you can handle 8K video with, with ease. So the version I have is 256 and it's gonna run you um, $129. I should have got the two. I should have got the five twelve, but the five twelve was one hundred and eighty dollars. So, but at the same time, I'm not going to be recording that much eight K video, so two fifty six is plenty enough. But I still would recommend getting the five twelve instead. To transfer your footage quickly and efficiently, don't forget it's CF Express Reader. It's a small investment that will save you a lot of time and frustration. I do recommend getting your CF Express Reader. The reason why is if you you can transfer from your camera, but it's very slow. It's very slow. So the 24 to 120 f4 is a great lens. It's fantastic. Image quality, everything, sharpness is great. However, it's f4. So I do think you need another, another lens to pair with that. So that could be a, a 24 or a 35 or a 50 1.8. So that way you can have low light capability, much better low light capability. And the, the lens that I choose is the 35 millimeter 1.8 from Viltrox. I think. With that lens, it will run out your kit a lot more. So I think right now, um, the price we're at, it's around $6,000 or a little bit more than that. I'll put something on the screen right here um, to let you know how much all this costs you. All right, that's my comp comprehensive list of what I think you should use to get started. Of course, right now in my, in my studio, I have other things in here to make this video work. Um, and lighting, I didn't talk about lighting. Um, which I probably should have, but I'll save that for another video. But let me know what's in your kit. Let me know what you think you should, someone should start off with and leave it down in the comments. Thank you, see you in the next one.